hunting suspected members of Daesh in a major counter-terror operation in Malaysia's capital. More than 400 people were detained during a series of raids in Kuala Lumpur. It's all part of security operations as Malaysia prepares to host the Southeast Asian Games next week. Our operations are focused on finding and taking action against foreigners with connections to terrorism, especially those linked to activities in Syria. We are worried about these Syria-linked elements being in Malaysia. But most of the people detained were undocumented migrants coming from Bangladesh, India, Nepal and Myanmar. The authorities say they did manage to uncover a fake passport syndicate. But the six-hour security operation failed to turn up what authorities were looking for. They were trying to track down 16 suspects recently deported to Malaysia from Turkey after they were caught trying to cross the Turkish border to enter Syria and join Daesh. Malaysia has complained these suspects, all foreigners, were sent to Kuala Lumpur without warning. With them still at large, security forces say they cannot risk being complacent. Malaysia suffered its first Daesh attack in June 2016. Several people were injured by a grenade thrown in a nightclub in Kuala Lumpur. Malaysia's Prime Minister says security forces have prevented other terrorist plots since. As Daesh loses its footholds in Syria and Iraq, there's concern it will turn its attentions southeast and look to set up new bases. It's a rising threat that the Defence Minister has labelled Malaysia's number one enemy. If the offensive in Mosul, Raqqa is successful, then we will be seeing a lot of returnees, um, hardcore and, uh, you know, battle-hardened um, IS and Daesh sympathizers coming back to our region. There's also concern Malaysia could see scenes like its neighbour, the Philippines. Security forces there have been locked in a months-long siege after Daesh members captured the city of Marawi. But the opposition has accused the government of politicising the threat of Daesh as a general election approaches. De facto opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim says anti-terror laws are being used as a tool to stifle dissent. Five years ago, Malaysia introduced the Security Offences Special Measures Act, and since then, 979 suspects have been arrested. The opposition says only 177 of those have been on Daesh-related charges. Is Malaysia's government using the threat of terrorism for its political advantage? Or are raids like this necessary to protect against a very real and imminent threat? Yvette McCullough, The Newsmakers. Well, joining me now from Kuala Lumpur is Zurairi R. He's a news editor and columnist for Malay Mail Online. Also from the capital, Asman bin Ujang. He's the former head of the Malaysian national news agency, Bernama. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. So um, let's talk about these, uh, this, this, uh, these raids, which police say uh, was a counter-terrorist operation. Zurairi, 400 people arrested. What's the story? Was there a security threat uncovered? Okay, uh, well, you have to understand that there are basically three things going on coincidentally around this time. So uh, we have one, uh, it is the crackdown on uh, unregistered foreign immigrant workers uh, starting from around July. And the second one is a, sort of like a cleanup of uh, the capital city Kuala Lumpur prior to the SEA Games uh, later this month. And of course, um, the third one is uh, you have the police uh, being very concerned uh, about uh, the, the missing whereabouts of at least uh, 16 uh, suspected terrorists who were deported just from Turkey recently. So to, to, be, to be correct here, it's not exactly uh, a crackdown on terrorists per se. It just so happens that one of the objectives is to root out uh, these uh, suspects. Asman, uh, the, the government says it was acting on security concerns because, of course, the, the Southeast uh, Asian Games are coming up. But in this case, uh, was this more about rounding up illegal immigrants and was the government trying to paint it as some kind of massive security exercise? Ah, Zoradi is correct. Uh, the combination of the three, but I think uh, it's more to do with uh, making sure the games, the South Asian games, will be uh, organized safely. And uh, 
I basically it's malicious way of nipping in the bud uh, a threat to posed by international terror groups, if you like. Uh, so we have been quite effective in that uh, due to maybe quite super intelligence uh, that we have in this country. Yeah, Malaysia uh, does have legitimate point. security concerns, doesn't it, about the spread of Daesh uh, or Islamic State, because they've been very active in Indonesia and the Philippines, uh, and there was an attack recently near Kuala Lumpur. So how concerned is the government that Daesh is uh, building some kind of foothold in Malaysia? Yeah, uh, the government is always uh, giving it number one priority against Daesh now, uh, because uh, Indonesia is close by and uh, we have tax in Indonesia and uh, in other countries. So uh, I guess, uh, like I said earlier, we have uh, had such uh, preemptive strikes. I think preemptive strikes, the security apparatus in this country, uh, it has worked quite effectively in the past. So I think continuing. Uh, with the uh, sea games uh, round the corner, I think uh, these uh, these threats are becoming, uh, I think, uh, not being under underestimated in any way. Uh, so. Uh, OK, so, uh, of course, security concerns because uh, there are many countries uh, worried about Daesh. But here's the problem. The government has extended its Controversial Security Offences Special Measures Act, also known as SOSMA, and these powers have been heavily criticised as being oppressive by human rights groups. Uh, Zarari, have, how much concern have these special measures uh, uh, attracted in Malaysia? Okay, the problem with SOSMA is uh, it was formulated as a way to root out uh, terrorism and extremism, but uh, we have seen concerns that uh, the act itself might be, um, the, the term extremism and terrorism itself is being uh, loosely defined. So, so we have uh, people who are not exactly, um, uh, as you say, being involved in uh, extremism or terrorism, but perhaps for political reasons, have been also rounded up uh, because they are deemed as a national security concern. So that, that, that is pretty much the worry of the uh, civil societies and human rights defenders in Malaysia. Uh, and political leaders have been rounded up, haven't they? Uh, the, one opposition leader, Maria Chin, she spent 10 days in solitary confinement. She was arrested under these special measures. So people are right to be concerned, aren't they? Yes, yes, correct. Like, like, like you've pointed, um, Maria Chin, who is just an elderly woman, I mean, what sort of national uh, threat can you expect from her? I mean, uh, she's the, uh, it's, it's clear that her detention uh, has nothing to do with terrorism and extremism. Uh, it, it's just that um, the group that she represents, um, per se, which is fighting for free and fair uh, election, is absurdly being painted out as a ne uh, th threat to national security. So I think you can make up, make up your mind uh, by yourself. I mean, the, 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 the sort of things that are being uh, used under the Act. Uh, Asman, do you agree that yes. uh, SOSMA is being used by the government to stifle dissent? That was the conclusion of a US government report uh, last month. Yes, there's nothing new in uh, US government reports or foreign uh, government reports on countries like Malaysia or Asia, I mean, in, in facing threats. But I, I as a journalist, would like to leave security matters best to our security forces or security intelligence to deal with. I mean, I can yes, only but you, you, say Your security that, forces shouldn't be arresting political leaders or people who disagree with the government. I mean, that's not what these security special measures were intended to be used for. Yeah, but they know best, you know. Uh, yeah, politicians, uh, maybe they, what in this country, uh, we have categorized quite a number of issues as sensitive. And politicians uh, uh, tend to um, rile up sensitive issues. So uh, before more damage is done, because uh, I think they have to be... Uh, done. I, I think most critics would argue that there is no way that any sort of special measures introduced to combat terrorism should be being directed at political opponents. Yeah, it's quite subjective, but, uh, well, it can be argued until the cows come home, but I think uh, in terms of security, uh, no country 
uh, would like to uh, compromise on the security. And I think that's why uh, Malaysia is, I would say, one of the safest, safer countries uh, in this region. Okay, uh, Zarari, we know that the next elections in Malaysia have to come sometime uh, before the, uh, it's the middle of next year, isn't it? Do we know when Prime Minister Najib Razak is intending to call them? <laughs> That's a mystery. I mean, you, you, you've got us here. I mean, um, not, none of us are pretty much aware of when it is going to actually happen. I mean, uh, we, are, we, are, we hear rumours a lot, but uh, there is no clear or concrete uh, indication where uh, it is, when it is going to be held, and that is uh, stirring anxieties around uh, not not just uh, the public but also uh, foreigners. I mean, to see uh, what kind of uh, I mean, I mean, in the, the future for the next few months of Malaysia, that uncertainty is there. Mm. And how strong a position is uh, is uh, the prime minister in? Because uh, he's alleged to be involved in this this massive, huge, multi-billion-dollar uh, financial scandal, and of course, these accusations that, that human rights aren't being respected in Malaysia. So how strong a position is he in, do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're correct. But um, surprisingly, um, yeah, it is uh, uncertain whether uh, the alleged scandal will actually uh, affect uh, when the general election uh, is going to be held. Uh, because uh, as you can see, the position of uh, Najib Raza as the uh, prime minister and also the president of the ruling party, AMNO uh, is... Uh, you can say that it is quite uh, a very strong position right now, despite uh, all the allegations that have been uh, thrown at him. Uh, for the past uh, year or so, he has been consolidating his position, uh, either with the public or within the party itself. Uh, and you can see coming up to the annual uh, General uh, Assembly of uh, the ruling party, uh, even uh, the grassroots are, are calling for his post to not be contested. That's how popular he is uh, in, in a way right now. Uh, if you uh, ask me about... Yes, go ahead, Asman. Yeah. I was going to ask you uh, how strong a position if, Razak's in. If, if you ask me about general election, I think it will be held uh, pretty soon. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Najib is going to uh, present to Parliament his uh, 2018 budget or national budget in October. So I think uh, it will be a very people-friendly budget. Number the best budget uh, that he has present will be presenting. I think because uh, and then uh, election will be called pretty soon after that. Of do, course, do, uh, do you think the, he's got any uh, any any um, particular rivals? I know the former prime minister Mahathir Mohamad is leading a campaign against Rajah. Yeah, but but he's 91 years he, old, he, isn't he? he? Yeah, 92 years old. But uh, what's happening in this country now, in this election, uh, is the, the opposition uh, parties are no longer as uh, united as before in the last two general elections, where they won very handsome uh, uh, seats in parliament. I mean, uh, depriving for the first time two-thirds majority for this uh, ruling coalition. Uh, so now they are in this array. Despite the fact that uh, you know uh, they are not together anymore, the Islamist Party passed is no longer with the the other two or three parties uh, as uh, we have seen in the last two general elections. They did very well because they were united. So uh, I would say uh, the the ruling uh, the ruling government will uh, perform quite uh, uh, and, and, well, very well. And very quickly, Zarari, uh, what are Malaysian voters looking for uh, in their uh, next election? I think um, we can expect the next general elections to be very heated um, because uh, for the last general election has been very racialized. We see a lot of racial cards being played, um, attacks or, uh, towards opposition, opposition parties, opposition leaders uh, when it comes to uh, racial issues. Uh, but for this uh, next election, you can no longer count on that race card. So we, we can expect to see a very... Um, uh, Islamized uh, elections in a way. Uh, you, for the past year or so, you have been uh, having a lot of uh, religious based arguments being uh, brought up again and again, uh, and it, it's pushing this country. Um, getting very divisive right now when okay. it comes to religion. OK, guys, we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, thank you very much indeed. We wait to see what happens uh, and when this election is going to be called. Uh, Zarari R and Usman bin Ujang, thank you.